Hi, um, welcome to the second uh, video in this series. Um, I'm doing a video on sort of some machines which I've built and I've used those for um, just, just as a small business in there. Um, it's, like I say, this is the second video. This is about the laser cutter which I've built. Um, I've had this running for about, oh, probably about just over a year now. And um, I do a lot of cutting with it. Um, with the acrylics and timbers and you know so engraving and that sort of thing, um, it's excellent for using on acrylics because when it cuts, it leaves a polished edge. Um, I haven't got to mess around with trying to polish it or flame polish it or whatever. Um, it's just ideal for that type of things, and um, you know, cutting all sorts of things from uh, acrylic mirrors. Um, we've just got a New Zealand North Island map here and um, sort of all sorts of shapes, um, hearts for cake toppers and um, you know people's names for cake toppers and uh, there's probably a better one to see, um, a Mr and Mrs Palmer which I've done for someone and um, then we've got engraving as well which um, is here, this is engraved onto acrylic um, just a lady's face um, so that just shows you the type of quality which you can get and like I say, I built the machine myself. Um, it took it took a lot of working out, um, especially with the you know with the physics <laughs> side of it. Um, the laser, you know, understanding the laser, understanding the wavelength of the laser, and um, you know just getting my head around all that to make sure I didn't make no mistakes when I was purchasing the equipment and obviously building the machine. Um, the, you know the, the equipment isn't cheap. The laser tubes are expensive. Um, the power supplies for those are expensive, and um, you know, and then all your various things. In here, there's mirrors to reflect the laser beam to get it down to your cutting point. You know, and all those are quite expensive. And obviously, the electronics and um, you know all that side of it as well, and you know, all the other bits and pieces and that. So yeah, so it has you know it has been quite expensive to set up. But um, you soon recoup your money, you know, by um, you know doing your sort of various pieces for people and small businesses and that sort of thing. So um, I've taken the sides off the machine um, and uh, the top off the machine. I'll, I'll take the camera off the tripod shortly and just go through and um, I'll film throughout the machine and just sort of pick out the various bits. Um, the the laser tube itself is a 60 watt laser and it will burn through, you know, I mean I cut 10 millimeter acrylic no problem and it just goes through in one cut and um, you know it leaves an excellent polished edge and that, that's very good. Um, obviously with the laser you've got your, you know, your health and safety issues, you know, so um, I've got these laser protective glasses here so wear them whenever, the, you know, I'm cutting them whatever and um, you know, because you can get the um, the, the laser, the, the light source is quite strong. You know, and if you you know if you watch the beam on certain materials, it does give you like arc eye, which you get off welding. Um, you know, if you look at it for too long and then look away, you can you can actually see that you know your your sight is um, you know. So you've got to be very careful with that type of thing. And uh, but enclosed in here, you know, and that's not too bad. So um, the the, the last thing I've got to do is just put an extractor system on and um, just to extract the fumes away because uh, cutting perspex or acry acrylic is, uh, is not good for you. So um, I've just got an extraction system which is uh, what I'm now building and just going on to the bottom of the machine just to suck the gases and you know the fumes away. Same with timber. If I'm cutting through MDF it, it generates a lot of smoke inside the machine so I just exhaust that to outside. And, um, you know, that's no problem then. Um, the, the machine has got the same size bed as what my CNC machine has got. That's a 1200 by 600 bed. So I, the, the, my, my feed, you know, my materials I can just put in at that size and uh, cut from, cut anywhere on the table. And um, the table will go up and down as well. I've got that on an automated thing um, driven by a servo as well, which is down in, down in here. That allows me to cut thick stock, you know, so if someone wants a piece of timber, you know, cut or engraved or whatever, um, 
into the top of it, you know, if they provide, you know, if they, if there's a quite a thick piece of timber, like a piece of tree trunk or something like that, I can engrave that by lowering the table down, so I can do that. Um, the other reason for having the rise and fall table was um, I'm going to build a uh, rotisserie sort of thing, and um, so I can engrave onto bottles or glasses or cups, you know, on cylindrical things. I'll be able to engrave um, all sorts of stuff onto those as well. Um, that's just a future project which um, I've just sort of been messing around with at the minute. So, um, just a bit of explanation about the machine. Um, in here we've got the readouts, your digital readouts for various things. Um, this one here is just for your machine um, itself. The to you can get this to all move around and whatever you you know if you want to start over here or start down in the bottom left you can move all the machine by the keys on here and also um, they've got your test fire so you can test fire the laser um, your reset buttons uh, your origin which means that if you move the machine over here and you want it to start from here every time for your cut you move your origin to that point um, like I say, the laser tube runs along the back. Uh, that's roughly about four foot in length, 1200 mil, and um, that fires out of one end. It uh, fires onto a mirror um, at that one end. It fires across to where the gantry, the gantry here. It fires across to another mirror on this gantry. Then it fires to the head, and inside the head is another mirror, and it fires down through a focus lens, and then obviously onto your workpiece. Um, when you're cutting, it's critical um, you get that focus point right on where you're cutting through. Otherwise, um, like if you're cutting 10 millimeter acrylic, it's no good having your focus point towards the top because your bottom won't cut through. And the same was if you got it too deep. When you're cutting, you'll have a V cut instead of a you know a nice clean cut. Um, when the, when the laser comes through your lens, you see you you haven't just got a square you know a square laser. It, it, it comes down like that. So where it comes down to your V point, you have to have that you know focused right on your materials what you're cutting. Um, obviously, it's different for different materials. Um, I've gradually got those worked out, and um, again just through trial and error, and uh, you know just getting the things off. I've now got all those you know written down on all my materials what I use so I can just cut the same every time and not have any issues. Um, on the on the head there's a air feed as well which um, extinguishes flames and you know helps with the cut and such so that just that just blows through there not, not very powerful at all just enough to you know keep keep your fires at bay you know, keep the flame up to the way and that sort of thing, because it will ignite. You know, on the, on this particular um, stock I've got in here now, it's got a, a protective paper on it, and um, if it cuts through that with no air on, it will just set fire to it. So you have that on just to blow, extinguish that flame. Uh, the machine itself is all belt driven. Um, you've got you know, there's a servo or a stepper motor at the back there, which drives your Y plane. And then you've got another um, stepper on the end of the gantry, which drives the laser in your X-plane. And then obviously there's one on the, the rise and the fall of the table. Uh, the cutter tip is stationary; that doesn't move at all. Um, it's just your table moves up and down for you know if you need to make any changes. Um, in on the bed, um, there's a because of the laser going through. Um, On the bed itself, there's a um, egg crate, what they call egg crate, which is an aluminium um, material. So these are all bits what are left over from previous cuts, just junk bits and whatever. So yeah, so the material just lays straight on the bed, and um, on here is just an egg crate, and that's what you use to cut onto. And that sits on a on a calibrated bed. Uh, the bed again is pretty much spot on to the tip of the cutter. Um, it's all adjustable, always, so you can get that you know exact. Because it the, the machine itself is on casters. Um, because of the floor, you know you never get a perfect floor. So the, the machine itself is pretty rigid. But after a while, you it may settle, and you may get fluctuations in your you know in your bed and that. So yeah, so the table is set up to the 
you know, to the tip of the cut. Um, what else can I say? And that's pretty much it on that side of things. Um, like I say, that's all once that's all um, closed in. You know, that's all closed in and, and a confined thing. So just to keep those gases in. And um, that's pretty much it for this video. I'll now sort of drag the machine out and I'll, I'll get the camera off the tripod and um, just show you around the machine and, you know, have a look and see how it's been sort of put together and that. So, in the back here, we have the laser tube. And on that laser tube, there's um, a water feed, uh, a cooling water feed. Um, when the laser's cutting, obviously it generates a lot of heat. So the, the tube has to be cooled with um, water. Um, in the water, there's well, the water, first of all, is uh, distilled, deionized de water. So if you get any water leaks, you know, the risk of electricity or electric shock is, uh, you know, greatly reduced by using uh, deionized water. There's also 10% um, antifreeze in the water to keep any growth at bay inside the tube. Um, you know, if you didn't use that, you, you do start, the tube starts to fur up, similar to what an aquarium does. So that 10% antifreeze helps keep that at bay. So if we lift up here, um, so the, the end of the laser tube is in there and you can see just about probably see the mirror that's the first stage mirror which it fires onto and that obviously reflects the mirror uh, the, this the uh, beam down to this mirror here and then that one onto the, the the head itself and in there you can see the back of the mirror there so that then fires down to the tip and then fires out to your workpiece um, at a real fine point. I mean that, that you know that's so fine. Um, the point is about oh, a quarter of a mil, something like that. So it's a real fine, you know, fine cut and tip. Um, they call that the kerf, which is the width of your um, your cut. So um, you know that is a real fine cut. In the back there, you can just see the stepper motor, which drives the Y axis, which is across here, driven by the belts and there's the x-axis stepper and uh, that's just the water uh, that's just the air feed running in the cable chain there um, there's a limit switch there um, when the machine is first switched on it um, comes down to the bottom left and uh, that just gives you your um, you know your cut so it knows where zero zero is um, I, I did put that on these machines because um, when you first switch on the software sends the head, the, the cut and head zero zero so I just needed to do that um, that's only at the bottom left where zero zero is all the rest when it when the machine goes further back you know when it goes that way the software then limits its um, so if once it hits 600 mil it will just limit and stop so there's all the readouts of the various things so here we've got all the controls for the laser itself we can move the laser around um, on here it shows the um, you know where you are um, you you know where where the machine is you know if it's sitting at 500 comma 500 or sitting at zero so it comes zero so it shows all that information on there here we've got the water temperature gauge um, built on to that is um, a sensor for the water so if the water stops feeding through the system if the pump packs up or something like that this automatically shuts the laser off and that will just stop um, it shows the temperature of the water on there this one here is the temperature uh, not the temperature you're cutting milliamps so it shows the power of the laser and um, you know the, the milliamps of what that's firing at coming inside down to here um, you probably won't be able to see that too well, but at the back there with the bits of red on, those are the stepper drivers. So there's three, one for each axis, and then you've got the electronics. So in there is the electronics to drive the laser um, itself, and the board, there's a board in there also which converts the signal from the um, drawings, what you do, 
into a language which the uh, laser understands. And then just inside is the machine itself. So the, here you can see the screws which the, the table sits, sits on, so they move up and down. Here's the, um, the belt drive which lowers the, and raises the table and then you can see the, the mechanism there for that which has got just a stepper motor sitting on the bottom of that. Um, all the cables on the moving parts all running cable chains and then you can just see the various cables going to their various things. And here, move the rubbish out of the way. This is the water tank, so in here is a few litres of water and you've got a sensor here to, for the temperature. Um, that obviously feeds all the way through into the machine. Here is a water cooler and that keeps the cooling of the water cold in the machine itself. Not too bad in the winter but in the summer it does get hot in here so that helps to keep the temperature down for that and then obviously the computer which controls that. So that's it for this video. Um, next video will be for the 3, 3D computer, the uh, 3D printer.